Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited, Canadian Safety Board wants more cockpit and flight recorders on planes. Reno is not the only race in town. A 4A says let airlines compete. Hello, I'm Christopher C. Odom. It's October 21st, 2016, and this is Airborne Unlimited. A Transportation Safety Board of Canada team is currently investigating the October 13th accident involving a Cessna Citation north of Kelowna, British Columbia. However, it's reported the board said the absence of the cockpit voice recorder or a flight data recorder will make this investigation particularly challenging. In Canada, only multi-engine turbine powered commercial aircraft flown by two pilots and carrying six or more passengers required to carry a cockpit voice recorder on board. This aircraft did not meet this threshold, therefore it was excluded from the requirement. Kathy Fox, chair of the safety board, said in part, as early as 1991, the board made a recommendation calling for the upgrade of flight recorder requirements. This latest accident is another reminder of how important these recorders are. Fox added, the Transportation Safety Board urges the industry and private corporate aircraft owners to take advantage of the new low-cost flight recording technology to advance safety in their operations. Recreational aviation comes in all shapes and sizes, and the Unlimited Scale Racing Association is one example of technology, aviation, and outright fun sharing the airspace all at the same time. According to ANN follower Jeff Wellis, the association's giant scale racing event held on October 13th through 16th in Victorville, California, proved to be a great success. Held at Rabbit Dry Lake near Victorville, Wellis said, the race of champions is a test of skills and endurance as pilots keep their airplanes in the running over three days, building to the winner take all championship trophy races held on the final day. Wellis added, with over 5,000 in prizes and cash purses at stake, pilots and crew compete fiercely, but do whatever it takes to help each other out in the pits to keep all the planes up and running. These radio-controlled model aircraft are capable of reaching very high speeds, and this year's event recorded a new world record at 247.6 miles per hour. Just to make it clear, these are actual speeds, not speed scaled down to match the airplane size. After the break, A4A wants non-regulated airline services. Sandia introduces the new SAI 340 Quattro TSO'd airspeed, attitude, altitude, and slip. With integral backup battery, safety never looked so good. See it now at www.sandia.aero. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. The Bristel Light Sport Aircraft is what you are looking for. The Bristel is wider than a Cirrus, faster than a Skyhawk, offers more storage than a Husky, and comes standard with Garmin Avionics. So what are you waiting for? Visit Bristel.com to find out how you can get into a Bristel today. Welcome back. If you'd like to be a supporter of Airborne Unlimited, send an email to jim at earl-news.net. As a result of the White House releasing proposals for new regulations regarding the operation of airlines, Airlines for America, also referred to as A4A, is warning that some Obama administration proposals could harm customers. A4A says that regulating how airlines sell their products will drive up the cost of air travel. While airline operations have always fallen under the FAA operating regulations and continue to be regulated by the FAA, legislation referred to as deregulation was passed in 1978, which took the government out of the business of telling airlines how to sell their products to their customers. It also did away with the government deciding which airline could fly to which destination. A4A president and CEO Nicholas E. Callio said in part, 
Airlines have a different business model and must be allowed to continue offering operational services in a manner that makes sense for both their customers and their businesses. Efforts designed to regulate how airlines distribute their products and services are bad for airline customers, employees, the communities we serve, and our overall U.S. economy. It's Friday, which means that it's time for ANN CEO and Editor-in-Chief Jim Campbell to check in with his weekly barnstorming commentary. We've been giving the city of Santa Monica and its beleaguered airport a lot of attention because what's going on there seems to be truly un-American. This week, Jim offers a proposal. Here's this week's barnstorming. Thanks, Chris, and hi, folks. Well, we've been doing a lot of thinking about some of the issues that are out there, and there was a memory in the deep, dark past that I have. We were all giggling because that morning we had published our version then of our April 1st episode. It was a lot of fun, a lot of silly things going on, and amongst that was this horrible story about bulldozers coming in and demolishing Miggs Field, And in the beginning, nobody could believe it was real, that somebody would take such a uniquely American icon, such a useful device as an airport, and destroy it. In my conversations with Phil Boyer that day, he was president of AOPA back then, uh, and with a number of other people, we're all shaking our heads in wonder at the fact that somebody could take something so precious and kill it. While the folks at Santa Monica aren't as immediately devious as Mayor Daley was in Chicago, there's no question that they have the ultimate same intent to kill off an airport, to kill off something that's been a guide to the rest of the world for people who want to fly from point to point, whether it be for business or pleasure, or in some cases in relief and helping people. There's just so many things that an airport does. It is a creator of business. It is a nexus of activity. It is a place around which progress situates. It's really an amazing thing. We're trying to figure out how to bring enough drama to it, enough gravitas, and then it just hit us. Somewhere around, I think, the second week of January right now, as as we currently envision it, Airborne's going to go to Santa Monica and produce Airborne that week from various places at the Santa Monica Airport or in the town of Santa Monica, depending on what we can get away with. In addition to doing Airborne each day, we're taking some of our best documentarians, some of our best shooters, some of our best interviews, and we're going to go out, shoot a lot of B-roll, a lot of interviews, put together as much data as possible, both for small pieces as well as a larger documentary piece to explain to the rest of the world what Santa Monica was, the immediate history, and where it seems to be going, and how we can fix it so that we can maintain Santa Monica as an airport of use to the community and the rest of the world. It's not going to be easy. It's an interesting idea. We've reached out to AOPA and EAA and MBAA and a number of others. They all seem very supportive, and we've gotten some great advice and a lot of uh, interesting uh, insights into what's been going on. I uh, spoke to Raul Murrow and a number of other people who have been active within the Santa Monica community for decades. And there's a lot to this story. But it needs to be told. It needs to be told in one fell swoop. And we need to arm the rest of the industry with more material. The result of this is one airborne every day, two a lot of smaller features about the highs, the lows, the positives and negatives, and then finally some documentary work. And then above and beyond that, we're going to take our B-roll, we're going to take these vignettes, we're going to take the records that we're going to copy and turn into digital format, and we're going to make a B-roll and uh, graphic archive so that the rest of the aviation community can utilize this in their own way to help save Santa Monica, to add to the mix, to be able to utilize these materials in any way. Our competitors can use it, the industry can use it, we don't care. We just want to support Santa Monica, we want to keep Santa Monica alive. And most important, we want to keep one more jewel in the aviation aeroverse alive and well so that our kids will enjoy it and their grandkids will too. So that airports and the freedom they represent can truly stay and be free. For the Aero News Network Airborne. After these messages, Naseo selects a new president. 
Redbird Flight Simulations is dedicated to revolutionizing flight training by designing, manufacturing, and delivering affordable and innovative flight training technologies. Each Redbird device is designed to enhance the training experience for pilots of all levels, from student to ATP. Redbird is quickly becoming the industry standard for flight training. Since Redbird introduced its revolutionary FMX in 2007, colleges, universities, and flight training operations around the world have integrated Redbird products into their curriculum. It's time to discover what Redbird can do for you. Join the migration. Based on the popular Sling 2 LSA, the Sling 4 was designed to be the most practical and desirable lightweight four-place experimental aircraft on the market. Find out more about this 115 horsepower turbocharged airplane at airplanefactory.com. Concorde's recombinant gas RG series sealed battery technology produces a high performance battery with the advantages of being pre-tested and fully charged at the factory. Find out more about Concorde's entire line of batteries at www.concordbattery.com. Concorde, the heart of your aircraft. Explore no limits flying in the FAA certified Sea Ray Amphibious LSA. One of the top three best selling LSAs in the U.S., Progressive Aerodyne Sea Ray comes equipped with a Rotax engine and exhibits extraordinary handling on land, water, and in the air. Check it out at www.searay.com. With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we're summarizing a few of those other great stories in a brief segment we call Around the Patch. The National Association of State Aviation Officials has named Mark Kimberling as the new president and CEO of the 85-year-old organization. Before joining NACEO, Kimberling served as the National Director of State Government Affairs at the Aircraft Owners and Pilots Association. GE Aviation has completed the initial ground testing of the first full GE9X development engine that will power Boeing's 777X aircraft. The company says the engine is living up to their expectations and they are extremely pleased with the results. The 1000th H-60M Black Hawk helicopter has been delivered to the United States Army. There are currently 2,135 H-60 Black Hawk helicopters in service, making the Army's Black Hawk helicopter fleet the largest flying fleet of all the services. Verizon made use of drones to help with cell site inspections from the air in North Carolina and South Carolina to survey areas impacted by severe flooding from Hurricane Matthew. The unmanned aerial systems are being operated by Measure UAS Incorporated. FAA Administrator Michael Huerta joined federal and local officials on Tuesday to dedicate the new air traffic control facility at McCarran International Airport. A taller tower, which is the second tallest in the country, was needed to provide controllers with better airfield views. Well, that's it for today's trip around the patch. Now let's get back to the rest of the news. Here's another update from the beleaguered airport in Santa Monica, California. The city of Santa Monica's starvation strategy of killing legitimate businesses on the airport in order to put the airport itself out of business have now been stymied by the FAA. The city of Santa Monica sent eviction notices to two FBOs saying they had to vacate their facilities by October 15th. Now, the Los Angeles Times reports that the city has postponed those evictions while the FAA continues to investigate the matter. According to the report, the agency will meet October 28th to consider whether the city can replace the independent businesses on the airport with a city-run operation. The city continues to deny this is an intentional plan to make the airport unusable because of lack of service and says they are prepared to operate the fixed base operation as a city function. As we reported on Airborne Unlimited last week, a famed restaurant located on the airport has also announced it will close due to a tri-fold increase in rent being charged by the city. Well, that's our program for today. Remember that Airborne Unlimited stream daily Monday through Friday with additional breaking news bulletins for important stories that fall outside of our normal deadlines. If you're watching us on YouTube, please subscribe and do check us out on Facebook and Twitter. Get comprehensive, real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aerol-news.net. 
Keep flying. We'll see you Monday.